Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us for today's EHS Daily Advisor webcast. Today we are presenting A Shift is Happening in Occupational Hearing Conservation, sponsored by Shoebox Automentary. My name is Sarah from EHS Daily Advisor and before we start today's presentation, there are just a few housekeeping items to go over. The ON24 Webinar Council offers multiple application widgets that you can use throughout today's presentation. You can resize, or minimize them as you wish. Please note that there is no dial-in for today's event. The audio will be streaming directly through your computer speakers. If you are experiencing any technical difficulties, please click on the help widget. It has a question mark icon and covers common technical errors. If your technical issue persists, please enter a question into the Q&A widget and our team will gladly assist you. Now on to today's exciting presentation, I'm pleased to introduce Alexa Go. Alexa is the Occupational Hearing Conservation Business Unit Manager at Shoebox Automentary. In this role, she works with some of the most forward-thinking manufacturers and on-site, near-site occupational health care providers in Northern America. She has a passion for partnering with them, in, with them to find innovative ways to improving the way they deliver autometric testing as part of a hearing conservation program, all while helping to achieve their overall business objectives. Now, without further ado, I'd like to kick things off by welcoming today's speaker to the floor. Alexa, over to you. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks for that introduction, uh, and welcome, everyone. Uh, on today's uh, webinar, or on today's call, what we're going to cover uh, is first audiometric testing programs. So uh, what are they, and why do we have them? Uh, as well as some of the common challenges faced by both in-house teams uh, and service providers. Then we'll cover how tablet audiometry improves workflow efficiency and reduces overall program costs. And I thought I would give you just a couple of uh, real-world customer examples so that I can uh, speak to these, you know, how we've solved those challenges uh, with some of our customers today. So first, uh, you know, likely most of you on this webinar today are already familiar with what audiometric testing is, but for those of you who are perhaps considering adding audiometric testing to your service offering, uh, or maybe you're new to a role that requires you to oversee an audiometric program, I thought I would first quickly review just what audiometric testing is, uh, as well as what a typical hearing testing program consists of. So first, when we say audiometry, what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about first a hearing test uh, performed using an audiometer. And an audiometer is simply a diagnostic medical device used to evaluate your ability to hear sounds. And those sounds will vary based on intensity and tone. Audiometric testing is only one, uh, but one of the main components of a hearing conservation program. Uh, and other elements will include uh, employee training, coaching, noise monitoring programs, sometimes known as dosimetry, dosimetry uh, as well as records keeping, reporting, and the distribution of personal protective equipment. In general, hearing conservation programs must meet specific regulatory standards, OSHA, of course, being the most common, uh, particularly in North America. But there are others, such as MSHA, there's ANSI, ISO, and sometimes regionally specific standards that can dictate how your program is run. Regulatory standards, of course, provide guidelines for where, when, and how audiometric tests must be completed, and also tell us what to do if an employee shows a shift in their hearing levels after an annual audiogram has been performed. We won't go too deep today uh, into the specific regulatory requirements, but we will discuss how you can use automation and tablet-based audiometry to meet any of these regulatory requirements. Audiometric testing programs begin, of course, with the baseline audiogram. Again, not designed to identify whether or not an employee has any hearing loss, but rather, what is their level of hearing at the start of their employment with a particular employee? Once that baseline audiogram has been established, then the employee must be retested annually to determine if there has been a shift in their hearing level against that baseline audiogram. If there is a shift, then of course there are prescribed next steps that must be taken by the employer uh, as well as the employee to ensure that the employee's hearing does not worsen due to workplace noise exposure. 
Again, as most of you on this call already know, running audiometric testing programs often comes with uh, its own set of challenges. And I can definitely tell you that some of those challenges are more common than others. So uh, for those of you listening on the call today, you know, tell me if any of these sound familiar. Um, you have limited amount of space in your facility and can't justify the large footprint of a sound booth. Or maybe you already have an audiometer and even a sound booth, but the equipment that you have is clunky or outdated or both uh, and expensive to maintain and calibrate on an annual basis. For those of you who currently manage your programs in-house, I'm going to bet that scheduling uh, all of your rounds of annual testing is a task you dread every year depending on whether you operate a 24-hour facility uh, or not, uh, as well as how many shifts you have going on a daily basis, scheduling tens or hundreds of employees for their annual hearing exams can pose a logistical nightmare. And we all know that without fail, every year, at least 5 to 10% of those employees will miss their, employment, their appointments for various reasons, which means that you will be stuck rescheduling those appointments either in-house or by sending these employees to a local clinic. Next, cost. Let's talk about cost. So if you're outsourcing all or maybe part of your program to a service provider, costs uh, associated with the hearing conservation program can add up quickly. Um, you've got your hard costs, which of course you know, can be the fees that you pay to a service provider or a clinic, uh, or for equipment that you're using in-house, of course. Um, then you've got the cost associated with transportation. If you are sending employees off-site for testing, you may be responsible for parking uh, costs, gas, transportation costs related to this uh, test. These are all your hard costs. But aside from those, you've also got those you know, invisible or soft costs that you've got to think of. Keep in mind that whenever you're taking an employee off their, their uh, line or their, their spot um, on the floor, you are paying them for non-productive hours and you may also be required to backfill their spot. So depending on whether or not the person who's filling in for them is working overtime or not, you should be factoring in those wage costs as well. Um, and again, as I'm saying this, you can see how these costs can add up quickly. And that's not even, you know, considering uh, your time, your lost productivity, those, those hours that you spend scheduling those appointments, and then, of course, the disruption to your regular business operations. For service providers, so you've got, you know, your own set of challenges that a testing program may pose. Um, if there are any service providers on the, the call today, some of these may sound familiar to you. Uh, first off, if you are using mobile units, so that's what you see on the screen there, the traditional mobile unit that comes on site uh, to a customer site with multiple sound booths and, and audio, audiometers uh, on board. These units uh, or these vans are, are expensive. They're expensive to purchase, to maintain, to insure, to gas up, to service. So if you are perhaps a small independent service provider, these, are, these costs can be a major barrier to entry into this market for you. Uh, maybe they've already prevented some of you from pursuing audiometric testing as a service uh, today. Again, scheduling. Scheduling is not simply a challenge for in-house teams, but it can also be a challenge for, for service providers. Uh, customer appointments, from what I've seen at least, uh, are typically book, booked weeks or even months in advance to provide or to ensure that you're providing coverage to that particular service area. But then, you know, life happens, and what happens when appointments need to be canceled or, or rescheduled? Um, you know, think winter weather, mechanical issues, the technician or the driver comes down with a cold. Uh, all of these things or any of these things can be cause for rescheduling, and rescheduling can be costly uh, and inconvenient both for you and, and the customer. Now, of course, it's not all uh, bad. You know, this traditional mobile unit business model does work in some scenarios for large clients, for example, and those who can find quite enough locations to park these trucks, which, um, as I'll get into in a, in a few moments here, can, you know, is easier said than done. But what about the smaller clients, those who perhaps have multiple small locations located across a wide geographical area? You know, driving to each one of those client locations may not be the most cost-effective option for, for either party. And then there's the question of retests. So what do you do about retests? Do you bring your mobile unit back to the client just to test a handful of employees? 
And what do you charge your customer for that? All of these challenges that I've just mentioned are ones that I hear about from my customers on a daily basis. So what's the solution? There must be a better way, right? Well, of course there is. <laughs> Let me introduce you to Shoebox Audiometry's Shift Edition. The Shift Edition of, of Shoebox was designed to meet the needs of our occupational health customers specifically. Uh, and it provides our occupational health customers, you know, regardless of company size or requirements, everything that they will need to test, report, track their hearing testing data, uh, and ensure that their program runs smoothly. So uh, we'll go into more detail into each of these different components, but I just want to give you an overview of what's included in the Shoebox Audiometry Shift Edition. So first, of course, there's the testing equipment, uh, which we'll explain in more detail, but this includes the actual testing equipment. Next, you'll have uh, a complete set of tools for reporting and managing your data. You'll, of course, have access to customer and technical technical support teams in case you, you know, hit any bumps in the road along the way while you're out in the field. And then depending on the size and the complexity of your program, we also have a wide range of, of professional services that could include things like integration into your existing systems, perhaps you require audiological review or consultation. Um, these types of services will be tailored to the customer needs. So they're, they're really custom um, and unique to the customer. Ultimately, though, the shift version of Shoebox Audiometry uh, is really an end-to-end -end solution for our occupational health customers, again, tailored specifically to meet your needs. Okay, so on the last slide I mentioned four components that made up the Shoebox Audiometry uh, solution. Now I'll go into each component in a little bit more detail. So Shoebox Audiometry, um, the first component I'll go into is the testing equipment. Shoebox is a tablet-based audiometric system, meaning that the, the main uh, testing equipment is, uh, includes an iPad along with a set of uh, calibrated audiometric transducers that plug directly into the iPad itself. Uh, the, the testing apparatus has several test modes that you can take advantage of, the most popular being our uh, fully automated self-presenting test mode. We recently also released a semi-automated test mode that we call assisted mode that allows the technician to control the pace of the tone presentation, but still having the tone selection be automated for them. Uh, and then for our KOX certified uh, technicians, we do have a full manual testing mode as well. Uh, regardless of, of the testing mode that you're using, uh, the Shoebox system does meet all regulatory standards for audiometric testing outside of a sound booth. You'll note that there is no sound booth listed here on the equipment list because Shoebox uh, does allow you to uh, test outside of a sound booth. Um, and that uh, really um, is a critical co uh, component of the system because what we allow you to do is, um, you know, all of this testing equipment that, I'm, that I've mentioned, the iPad, the transducers, uh, and actually an iPad stand as well, all of this equipment we put into a nice mobile lightweight kit for you that, you know, all, all entailed weighs less than four pounds. So incredibly mobile um, and, and, uh, and portable. Um, one note here on the equipment itself, so uh, you probably have questions that we'll get to at the end regarding, you know, power or Wi-Fi connections because we are an application that's installed in an iPad. No power, no Wi-Fi required. You can actually test with Shoebox in a completely disconnected environment. Um, I'll explain in a moment here how that works and how the data is stored and transferred following the testing, but ultimately, uh, incredibly lightweight, portable, and mobile testing equipment. Next up uh, is data management and reporting. 
So the iPad-based audiometer is used to test and gather the data. And then we have a companion system. It's a nice uh, web-based, HIPAA-compliant data management uh, portal that we give you access to that allows you to do a number of things. First, uh, of course, we're going to allow you to import any historical data that you need to. So if you do have baseline audiograms or historical data that you can upload either manually by simply inputting values or if you have the uh, digital files that we can upload, we make that really simple and easy for you to do. Even if it's gathered with other systems, you can upload that data so that it's ready to go for your baseline comparisons. Then we make it easy for you to organize that data into uh, groups. So for our service provider customers, for example, you may be using your shoebox system to test 5, 10, 15 different customers. You obviously have to have a way to organize that data into a client group and then generate reports on those groups. We make that really simple for you as well. You can also do things uh, like uh, generate reports on individual or group basis. Uh, it's going to allow you to track an employee's shifts in their hearing or hearing history over time. Uh, all of our reports are designed to meet uh, you know, the OSHA requirements for records keeping as part of a hearing conservation program. Um, but it allows you to do all of this from a really user-friendly, simple, uh, easy to use, customer portal that you can access from any web browser. The last thing I'll make a note of here that's really nice and is a feature that my customers love is that all of this data management and reporting, as long as you have an internet connection, which again is not required to test, but if you are testing in a connected environment, uh, what you're able to do is uh, see these results and generate reports uh, and review the audiograms uh, in real time remotely. So you may have someone at, you know, who is off-site, maybe in your head office or your you know, local office, that wants to have access to the reports in real time. That person, whether it's an audiologist who's reviewing results or some other person who's responsible for reviewing the data, that can be done remotely because, again, our data management portal is, is web-based, so it can be accessed from any web browser. Next up, so again, so I mentioned the testing equipment coupled with the data management portal. Um, the third component of the solution that really rounds out the, the system, particularly for some of our larger customers or enterprise level customers, is uh, you have access to a, a team of professionals that will offer a, a wide ranging selection of professional services. Uh, that can be, you know, technical resources. So perhaps you have, uh, you know, internal systems that you want the audiometric data to feed into or integrate with automatically. Perhaps you have, you know, your employee data stored in SAP, but you need that to be fed into an LMS system and have those feeds happening on, you know, daily or weekly or some other regular interval. Um, you will have access to our team of IT or technical specialists that can map out those workflows with you and design a solution that meets your unique requirements. Maybe it's that you don't have a, a local audiologist to assist in the review of audiograms or the supervision of your program. Uh, you do have access to our team of audiologists here at Shoebox to meet that requirement. Um, it may even be simply consultation in terms of program design and, and deployment. Um, another service that you have access to is is our our expertise. So we've done we've done rollouts now with customers of all sizes, small to large, uh, multi location, international even. So when we work with particularly our enterprise customers, but also you know customers of, of smaller size. Take advantage of our, our experience and our expertise. Uh, allow us to share best, best practices with you. Uh, and in some cases, we help with the design of the, the program in general. Um, again, all of our solutions are designed and customized to meet the needs of each of our customers. So these are just some of the, the services that we offer. There are others. Um, and, and, you know, again, these are just designed to meet whatever needs or whatever gaps you may have today in your program. Lastly, this is the fourth, uh, you know, key component of our offering, and this is, of course, our, our incredible customer and technical support teams. Both of our customer and technical support teams operate out of our head office here in Ottawa. 
so uh, this means, you know, this is the team that you go to uh, your first point of contact for those technical questions, the everyday questions, the how do I update my iOS or my app version, uh, help, I forgot my password. These questions are ones that you could direct to either our customer or technical support teams. They are always available to our customers by phone, email, and chat. Um, and they're, like I said, located here in our, in our offices in Ottawa. So if they aren't able to, to assist you, um, of course, they're only a few steps away from, from your account manager and your support team there. So, um, you know, the, the peace of mind of knowing that you have a support team that understands your business model is, is local uh, and is available to, to assist you uh, throughout the day or when you're in the field doing your testing. Okay, so uh, now that we've, we've covered the key components of the Shoebox system, uh, we've talked about a, a few of the common challenges that, that uh, you may face on a daily basis, whether you are running an in-house team or a service provider. Um, what I wanted to do next was give you a few real-world exam examples of um, some of my current customers. I picked three uh, because they each have a different use case. The first one that we'll look at is an in-house team. So uh, with this in-house team, um, when we, when we first started working with them, this is a large food processing plant. Um, they were, when we first started working with them, outsourcing their testing program to a, a service provider, large, very well-known service provider. Um, this particular plant was a 24-hour operation. They had three eight-hour shifts running uh, a seven-day-a-week cycle. From a scheduling standpoint, you can imagine how difficult it would be to schedule a few hundred employees uh, for their annual hearing tests when outsourcing to a service provider, um, and particularly when questions of, say, overtime come into play and, and things like that. So when I met this, this uh, health and safety manager that was running the in-house program, she told me that she was spending over 80 hours a year uh, just scheduling annual hearing tests. So, uh, you know, two full weeks of her time just scheduling. And her scheduling looked like a matrix. Uh, it made no sense to me. It was incredibly complicated, but she was able to do it. Um, but it was a big pain point for her, particularly because um, not only was it taking her away from her, her other responsibilities, but also because each year she was seeing that at least 10% of her employees um, were, were, were missing their appointments, various reasons. You know, my, my kid got sick, or I missed, um, or I have a vacation plan that day, or I'm sick, or, you know, things happen, life happens. So she was then having to schedule retests for that 10%, and the way that they were doing that was outsourcing to a local uh, chain of clinics that uh, was not very cost-effective, particularly if she was having to send those employees to have their testing done outside of regular business hours, which she often had to, uh, which resulted in a doubling of the testing fee. So uh, the pain of the scheduling, the pain of having to send those 10% those or so employees each year for off-site testing that had high cost, um, and also just the disruption to their business. So uh, again, this was a, a service provider that was coming on site with the traditional mobile unit. Um, one note on this particular customer that might be familiar to some of you, uh, this particular plant, just where it was located, it happened to have had, um, or it has, uh, a railway directly behind the, the facility. So the mobile unit would come on site, it would park in the only place that, it, it, that there was space to park it, and unfortunately that location was directly next to the railroad. So uh, if ever a train went by, that further delayed the testing cycle. And again, um, when we're talking about outsourcing to a service provider, that can have costs associated with it as well. So all of these things, you know, disruption to business operations, scheduling challenges, and certainly cost were what led them to come to Shoebox uh, and explore an alternative solution. When uh, this particular customer came to us, the hard costs associated with each employee's test was sitting at around $50 per test, all things considered. Again, this does not factor in the soft costs that this, this particular customer um, was incurring, but around $50 per customer, sorry, per employee. 
after we, w we were able to uh, update her program using Shoebox, bringing the testing in-house, we were able to show her a hard cost savings, again, only hard cost, not soft costs, of more than $10,000 in that first year. Um, but more importantly, we were able to eliminate the pain associated with the scheduling, um, mainly because we were able to move them off a once per year testing cycle to a rolling schedule. In this case, what, what they decided to do was go to a higher date schedule. So employee would get their first test done at a time of employment and then move over to a, a higher date uh, anniversary so that on their anniversary of higher date each year, they'd get pulled in for their, their hearing test. That allows this particular customer to test uh, you know, five to six people a day at most, which is much less disruptive than trying to test five or six hundred at one time each year. Okay, next customer that uh, I'd like to discuss, a um, bit of a different situation here. So with the last customer, what we did was, was actually uh, you know, help them transition from a service provider-led model to a uh, in-house controlled model using Shoebox. With this customer, um, very well-known oil refining company in the U.S., um, with this particular customer, what we've done is not completely change their, their program model. Instead, what we've done is, is moved or helped them move over to what I call a hybrid model. So for this particular organization, what they have is uh, – Central hubs, they call them hubs, um, where their main operations take place. And then they'll have what they call terminal locations spread out throughout the region. The, the main hubs, in this case, um, they actually had uh, an incredibly um, you know, robust clinic in each of these uh, hub locations. So they had a sound booth, they had uh, traditional style audiometric equipment, but they also had nurse practitioners, uh, in some cases an occupational physician on staff, nurses on staff at each of them, um, you know, state-of-the-art fit testing equipment, the whole nine yards. So that wasn't a program that they were looking to uh, eliminate. They would made quite a significant financial investment in that program. But where they had challenges were the terminal locations. So what they had been doing was um, for these terminal locations that had, let's say, 20 to 100 employees in each, what they had been doing was bring those, bringing those employees to the hubs uh, so that they could be tested on site in these, these larger hub locations. Depending on where they were in the state, that could be incredibly costly to the employer, just in time, but also, again, transportation costs. Uh, in some cases, there was even accommodation costs, which sounds... Uh, crazy, but depending on where they were in the states or um, or if they were in uh, remote locations, they would have to be brought into the city to these lo these larger locations for their tests. Sometimes having to stay overnight, so the cost of bringing these um, you know relatively uh, small number of terminal employees to the central hubs was was significant. So that's where Shoebox comes in. So again, instead of eliminating their, their current program, what we said is, okay, we can help you eliminate the challenges that you're facing in your terminal locations by giving them access to Shoebox to test uh, on-site in the terminal locations themselves. And then, you know, if need be, let's say there was an unusual audiogram or, um, you know, a, an employee that um, qualified for additional analysis and assessment, they could then decide, make the judgment call to bring them up to their, their large hub locations. So what we did was we looked at how many hub locations there were and designed uh, and how many employees in each along with how they were spread out geographically and said, okay, based on this, we figure that you can, you know, make do with this number of shoebox systems. We'll train someone uh, locally at each. It wasn't actually each location, but for each region, uh, that which, you know, in some cases meant that one shoebox system could be shared between three sites or two sites. Um, they would just ship the shoebox system in between themselves to make sure that everyone was covered. Uh, and then what we were able to do is have all of that data that was gathered with shoebox fed directly into their local uh, EMR system, electronic medical record system, um, so that it was all stored in one place. So no more loss of data uh, or missing data for those terminal employees, which as many of you probably know can be an issue. Whenever you're sending an employee off-site 
for, for testing, um, ensuring that that data that's captured is sent uh, back to your local system can be a challenge. So because of the way that Shoebox is designed and the way it can integrate with existing EMR systems or, or other systems, easy for us to make that process streamlined for them. Okay, last customer case study here that I wanted to, to cover um, was uh, one that's actually very common. So we work with a large number of uh, independent service providers that uh, either provide on-site testing services to clients uh, or some of them may be brick and mortars. They may have clinics locally that provide services or maybe they're a combination of the two. But this is a very common uh, use case that we bump into on a daily basis. So um, we'll have often, you know, independent service providers that provide other types of tests besides audiometry. So they may do drug and alcohol, uh, vision screening, fit testing, that kind of thing, but not audiometry. So they're working with clients already, um, providing various services to those clients, and then one of those clients inevitably asks them, you know, could you also manage my audiometric testing program? Problem for the small independent service provider, and I alluded to it earlier in the presentation, um, but you know, those, those traditional mobile uh, vans that, that we've seen uh, so often is that they're expensive. So it can be cost prohibitive to the small independent service provider to invest in one of those, those units. You know, for some, in some cases it could be fifty, even $100,000 that you're, you're looking at spending just to invest in, in this van. And then that doesn't include, again, the costs associated with insuring it and, and having the drivers manage it and all of that. So not always the best option for the small service providers. Um, in this particular instance, um, it wasn't just the, the cost of the mobile unit. Um, it was also that this particular customer had a request from, them, from one of their customers to offer the audiometric testing on a, on a fairly urgent deadline. So that I think that this, for this one it was they had two weeks to get up and running. Two weeks isn't a lot of time to go out and find a mobile unit and have a driver certified and, and you know, find the capitals to invest in that. With Shoebox, we can actually get you up and running in five to seven business days. That includes the time it takes us to calibrate your system, ship it to you, and train you on the system. So, of course, we, we provide training to all of our customers in how to use Shoebox, how to test, interpret results, generate reports, manage your data. Um, we were able to get this particular customer up and running in under a week uh, and have them testing their, their customer's employees. Um, again, I, I can't stress this enough, the ability to take a, a case, the, you know, the audiometer itself, again, weighs less than four pounds, and we provide you with this mobile kit that gives you everything you need to, to set up on site at your customer location. So, um, as you know, it's something that you could either take as a carry-on with you on a flight or put in your, your vehicle and bring to the customer site. But um, I've spoken to enough nurses and technicians that have had, you know, back issues from lugging around this, this clunky, outdated equipment that when we hand them a shoebox kit, you know, I see the, the joy in their face that, that they don't have to worry about that challenge anymore. So, key takeaways from this use case. Uh, one, able to get them up and running and trained in, in about a week, which allowed them to meet their own customer deadline. Um, two, really uh, for them it was a cost-effective option because they were not investing in a piece of equipment, in this case a mobile unit, that you know they hadn't really, um, they couldn't justify the spend for yet because they'd only had a small number of customers request this service. So investing in a $100,000 unit, high risk for them versus investing in a shoebox unit that was much more, um, you know, cost effective in terms of an option. And then also the fact that our systems, it's not on the slide here, but one of the key factors that, that I know, um, you know, make this an appealing solution for our service providers that are perhaps new to audiometry is that you do not need to be uh, an, audio, an audiologist to use our systems. Like I, I mentioned earlier that we have a fully automated testing mode as well as what we call an assisted mode that's semi-automated, which enables even, you know, uh, it enables technicians that are perhaps new to audiometry um, or have never tested before to provide this as a service to their customers. 
The last thing I'll make a note of here is that for these service providers that are perhaps new to, to audiometric testing, uh, again, I mentioned earlier that you have access to our team of professionals here that does include uh, audiologists, it does include um, you know, individuals that have rolled out large programs for service providers. So again, um, providing uh, our customers with a solution that enables them to get up and running quickly and cost effectively is something that we, we do on a daily basis. Okay, so we've discussed some common challenges, the solution itself, a, customer, a, cu a couple of customer case studies. Um, whenever we're talking about hearing conservation um, programs, it's, you, we have to talk about the clinical validation and, and regulatory compliance because this is an absolutely uh, critical component of, of our solution and, and also of hearing conservation programs. So uh, I mentioned at the start of the, uh, the webinar that I wouldn't be going too deep into the regulatory compliance piece, but I did want to show this slide to, to just reference the fact that uh, we take regulatory compliance extremely seriously. Um, we have a compliance team here that uh, is ensuring that we are operating within compliance on a daily basis, not only as an organization, but in terms of the, the solution that we offer. Uh, there is a long list of clinical, you know, third-party peer-reviewed research papers, clinical validation studies published on our website that you can access uh, at your leisure. I put three uh, up there on the slide for you to take a look at, but there are others available through our website or by simply emailing me. I'm happy to provide you with others that are not shared publicly. Uh, most important for me, if, and, and you know, if you do take the time to read through some of these clinical validation studies, um, and again, these are third party. These are not studies that we've performed ourselves. These are third party uh, peer reviewed papers that have been done by or institutions such as the Walter Reed uh, Military Medical Center, the Mayo Clinic, and so forth. Three key findings that I, I have as a takeaway from those studies. The first being that Shoebox produces results that are consistent with clinical audiometers. That's, that's important, obviously. Um, and I certainly can say that I've had customers uh, compare results gathered with shoebox to results gathered with traditional equipment. That's fairly common, actually. Um, the second key takeaway that I found is that shoebox can be operated by technicians with only minimal audiological training or audiometric training. I mentioned it before as well that uh, we include training in the cost of our systems. So we're not just going to hand you a shoebox system and expect you to know how to use it. We will work with you, um, you know, from the outset, making sure that you're comfortable testing with shoebox and also interpreting results, generating reports, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, and the third finding uh, or key finding from these uh, clinical validation studies is that um, shoebox audiometry produces clinically valid results even when testing outside of a sound booth. So again, the ability to offer uh, clinically valid results even when testing outside of a booth uh, is absolutely critical for our solution. We want to enable more people to test hearing in more environments. Um, I mentioned three of my current customers. Those are fairly uh, typical of who I work with, but um, if you consider a food processing plant, an oil refinery, um, an automotive manufacturing facility, you know, these are noisy environments. Airport, another great example. These are noisy environments, and we've been able to work with, with uh, our customers to uh, enable them to bring their program in-house to test outside of a booth, but still achieve uh, results that will meet uh, regulatory standards and also clinical standards. Lastly, um, the slide that I have here, um, I, I include this because it's a, it's a small snapshot of the types of organizations that we work with on a daily basis. Uh, I love my job and I love it because I get to work with these guys. <laughs> so these are organizations that are forward thinking, innovative, um, that they focus on technology first, and they're open to alternative solutions. You know, I asked at the beginning of the presentation, you know, they're, isn't there a better way? There is. There's a better way to test audio uh, or perform audiometric testing. Um, and these are the types of organizations that have bought into to the idea of Shoebox and what we're doing out in the field. Um, and, and, and we're quite proud of, of the customers that we work with today and, and who we're you know, continuing to work with in the future. So uh, with that, uh, I, will, I will open up the floor to questions and hopefully there are many of them. <laughs> Thanks so much for your time. Thank you so much, Alexa. So let's kick off the Q&A. Um, for any attendees who have not entered a Q&A in, please feel free. We have plenty of time to answer questions. 
Um, the first question I have for you is, does your equipment and software meet the requirements of ANS specification for audio meters? S3.9 sure, I, I have. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I'm going to assume that the, the question is referring to ANSI, um, S3.6, and the answer is yes. Absolutely, we meet ANSI, both OSHA and ANSI standards for audiometric testing outside of a sound booth. Um, for the ANSI standard, we also calibrate to the ANSI standards, which are um, you know, over and above what, what OSHA expects from a calibration standpoint. Uh, so, I mean, that's a simple answer. Yes, absolutely. And, of course, we have documentation to... Uh, that we regularly provide to customers to ensure that they know exactly how uh, we meet this, this standard. Awesome, thank you. The next question I have for you is, does your software have the ability to apply the age correction adjustments for males and females? Absolutely, great question. Yes, the answer is yes. So uh, within, so I've mentioned our data management and reporting tools. So uh, one of the great things about this solution is that we actually allow our customers to uh, define how their reports are generated and how the calculations for not only shift, um, but other, other calculations are, are completed. Um, we do give our customers the option of applying age correction or not. I can tell you just anecdotally that um, I don't have any customers that that don't currently apply age correction, um, and yes, we factor in gender as well. So when, when we are performing tests on the shoebox uh, audiometer, there are only four fields that we require in terms of demographic information. Those are first and last identifier, which could be first and last name, but you know, in some instances it's just a numerical, alphanumerical code. Uh, so first and last, and then age, uh, sorry, date of birth and gender. So um, yes, to answer that question, absolutely, we allow uh, age correction to be applied and specific to gender as well. Awesome, thank you so much, Alexa. The next question I have for you is, how do we handle those who need retesting? Sure, that's a great question. Um, what I can ha what I can say here is 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 what I tell my customers today. So um, when you perform, let's say you've performed your annual test for an employee, uh, and uh, a shift is detected in their level of hearing. So uh, OSHA does give us a 30 day window to perform a retest. Depending on the customer use case, and again, this is going to depend on what personnel they have internally, so whether or not they have an audiologist or occupational physician on staff or not, but generally speaking, what I recommend my customers to do is they perform the retest with uh, the shoebox system first. So you have 30 days to retest. Um, in my opinion, you're going to want to wait at least a few days before you perform a retest um, in, the, in the chance that the, the shift was uh, caused by some sort of temporary condition, perhaps head cold, uh, maybe they had gone to a loud concert the night before, um, you know, wax build up, this kind of thing. Give it a few days, perform the retest using Shoebox. Again, we make it very simple and, and easy for our customers to uh, generate shift reports and track shifts over time. So if they do perform the retest with Shoebox and the shift is confirmed, uh, then of course there will be uh, prescribed next steps that need to be taken. One of those steps may be referring them out to a local audiologist for follow-up testing and analysis because that, that loss in hearing or that shift in their hearing level, of course, could be attributed to um, you know, more serious causes you know, physical physical causes and things like that that only an audiologist is, is qualified to, to diagnose. Thank you. The next question I have for you is, can we upload baseline audiograms from prior test records into Shoebox? Yes, absolutely. So, um, of course, uh, if particularly if you're switching over, um, if you're new to audiometric testing, this may not be as important, but if you're adding um, or switching over from your existing system to a shoebox-based system, um, really simple to do this. We make it easy. There's two ways. Uh, one, you can do it manually. If you do not, let's say you're moving from a paper-based system to uh, a digital system and you don't have digital copies, that's fine. Uh, really easy to uh, upload, say, an employee list, and then for each employee, you can generate a new audiogram manually, 
where uh, we would have all of the different frequency fields laid out for you. You'd enter the threshold values, uh, click baseline, and, and click save, and you're good to go. Um, it's not the most efficient way to add the baselines, but I have many customers who uh, are moving away from a paper-based system, and this is how we do it, and um, you know, it's, it's quite simple to do, and again, we'll show you how to do that. The other way that's more commonly used is we'll do an automated uh, upload of results um, using what we, what's called a CSV file. So CSV is really just a spreadsheet. Um, and so while we do your training, your initial training with you, one of the, to the components of the training is how to upload your historical results. So you'd upload a spreadsheet, say, of employee uh, or employee list, um, and then we would help you upload that list of audiograms as well, ensuring that they, they attach to each employee's file. Um, either way you do it. Um, of course, I guess the third way I should mention is that uh, more and more I'm seeing that imp uh, customers are wanting their, their data feeds to come directly from existing systems, whether that's SAP or EMR systems or whatever that may be. So that's also a third option. Usually that's limited to the enterprise customer, but it is something I get asked about more and more frequently. So I guess really there's three ways to, to integrate the data or upload the historical data. Whichever option you choose, you'll have access to our team of, of professionals that, that you know, hold your hand through the process, and it's really quite simple. In most cases, there's even no IT involvement in that process because it's really just a, an upload of a file like you would attach a file to an, to an email. Thank you. The next question I have for you is, does your equipment require acoustic calibration or exhaustive calibration as defined in 9 CFR 1910.95? If so, does it come with these calibrations? And let me know, Alexa, if you want me to push this to the slide area for you to view it. Uh, no, absolutely. I know exactly what this person is asking. It's a great question. Um, yes, absolutely. Uh, we, ha we are held to the same standard as any piece of traditional equipment. So uh, I mentioned a few moments ago that we meet ANSI standards for, for calibration. So I'll explain a couple of things. One, uh, how we meet that standard, but also how we manage calibration. So um, our systems must be calibrated, a full acoustic calibration on an annual basis. Uh, and the way that we manage that is proactively for you. So what we'll do usually, you know, four, four weeks prior to your uh, recalibration anniversary, someone from the customer support team will contact you, notify you of that upcoming anniversary, and arrange um, for new calibrated transducers to be sent directly to you. You'll return the calibrated trans or your old transducers to us in that same box, uh, and, and then they'll be repurposed here. So there's no sending out of equipment, although we do do a full acoustic calibration every year, you're never sending equipment out for calibration. We send you new equipment, you send us the old stuff, uh, and as soon as you receive the new equipment, it's already been calibrated to your unique software license, and it's ready to go right out of the box. Okay. Um, aside from the comprehensive acoustic calibration that happens on an annual basis, Usually, you're going to be doing some daily verifications as well. And we have two tools built into Shoebox that allow you to do your daily checks. The first is a very basic uh, presentation of a tone to first the left and then right transducer. Uh, and then we have the ability to walk you through or we'll train you on how to do a, a full biological verification uh, using the system on a daily basis as well. So. Um, essentially, you would walk through, uh, typically it's a four-frequency test um, with using our automated platform to complete that biological verification, um, but you have a couple of options there. Again, something we cover during your training. But to, to answer that question, absolutely, yes, we calibrate uh, on an annual basis. It is required. Uh, we do meet ANSI standards for, for calibration. We manage that process for you uh, proactively so you don't have to worry about, um, you know, allowing your calibration to lapse, which does happen. Um, we will manage it proactively for you and, uh, you know, really, all in all, we, we're held to the same standard as any audiometric piece of equipment, so we have to adhere to all of the same standards as even a traditional audio, audiometer would have to. Thank you, Alexa. The next question I have for you is, what about equipment replacement or update with changing technology? I know you kind of hit on that, but I'm not sure if you had anything else you'd like to elaborate on that. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's a really good question. So um, the main equipment or the, the, the only equipment that our system includes is an iPad and a set of transducers. And then, of course, you have your accessories and iPad stand, things like that. But the main components are the iPad and the calibrated transducers. The calibrated transducers are replaced every single year for you. That's how we manage our calibration process. The iPad itself, uh, typically we would uh, replace that iPad every three years or so. Generally speaking, though, what we like to say is that we will always ensure uh, that the iPad you are using, well, A, it's brand new when you receive it. Uh, we will always ensure that you are using hardware uh, that is compatible with our software version. Now, we know that Apple loves to update its, its versions quite frequently. Um, if ever there was an instance where the iOS or the, the iPad itself became uh, incompatible with the, the current version of Shoebox, we would at that point swap out that iPad as well to ensure that you're, you're using equipment that um, is compatible. Um, either way, um, oh, I should mention as well that we do have quite comprehensive warranties uh, in place as well so that if anything should happen to the equipment, um, I mentioned the functional checks earlier. Um, let's say, for example, you're doing a functional check on the transducers at the start of a test day and you notice crackling or perhaps intermittency in the tone presentation. Um, we have a fairly robust warranty that's included in the cost of our systems that allows for us to replace any defective equipment. Um, either way, it's something that we worry about so that you don't have to worry about it, um, and you can always rest assured that you'll be uh, using equipment that is um, compatible with the current version of Shoebox, but also, you know, new. Thank you. The next question I have for you is, does Shoebox follow MSHA regulations for steering conservation? Yeah, absolutely. Um, from, a, from an equipment, uh, from an audiometric equipment standpoint, there's really no, no difference uh, between OSHA and MSHA. The difference is really how the tests are going to be performed, when and where, and that kind of thing. Um, so yes, absolutely, we meet those, those requirements. What I will say is that um, we work with a number of, of clients that uh, you know, operate within that MSHA space versus OSHA. We have a lot of experience doing that, and um, we're happy to provide uh, guidance in terms of MSHA-led uh, programs versus OSHA or ANSI. Um, or any other regulatory standard, but from a, a purely testing equipment standpoint, there's really little to no difference between what MSHA is looking for versus OSHA or ANSI or, or CSA or, or you know any of the, the big regs. So yes, absolutely, um, we're a great solution for MSHA uh, um, regulated programs. Thank you. The next question I have for you is, what would you suggest for the storage of the data? Um, I mean, well, the, the, the simplest way is to use our data management system. Um, if you don't have any existing data management tool that you're using, you absolutely should be using ours because it's going to be the most cost-effective option for you, the simplest, um, and there's no volume cap on the amount of data that you can store in your, your Shoebox account. So you could be testing hundreds or thousands of, of patients with your system, um, and, and you'll never run out of space. Um, if you are using some other tool, well then, like I say, we can integrate with that. But for, for someone who doesn't have um, any sort of existing data management tool, absolutely, use the, the shoebox tool that comes standard with each of our systems because that's going to allow you to have all your data nicely organized in one place. Um, and then if ever you do decide to add an additional, let's say, EMR or some sort of records management system at a later date, uh, the data in Shoebox is stored in what's called conventional file format. So you could always export that data at any time um, for storage or analysis in, in a third-party system. We've designed the system, um, you know, on an open platform, but one that can, you know, speak well with other tools and other systems so that, you know, as your business requirements change, uh, you can always access and, and transfer that data whenever you need to. Thank you. The next question I have for you is, do you supply the headset? Yes, absolutely. So um, we do have a, a, you know, a variety of headsets available. Um, some of the options are, you know, the traditional style headset where it's a TDH50, um, or, you know, or foam inserts depending uh, on, again, the personnel that you have uh, internally, whether or not they're qualified to, to work with foam insert headsets. Um, what I can say is that I would 
90% or more of my current customers use one particular type of transducer. Uh, it's the Radio Era DD450. It's a nice, you know, circumoral headset, adjustable, comfortable for the patient, um, but also provides quite a high level of passive noise attenuation. So for the occupational customers specifically, this is really our, our gold standard, although I am seeing it used more and more now in clinical settings as well. Um, it's actually a uh, improved upon version of, if any of you remember the HDA 200s from Sennheiser, it has the same internal, um, you know, brain of the, the Sennheisers, just an improved uh, cup, um, you know, which provides higher levels of noise attenuation. So certainly for the occupational health customers, it's an ideal solution. And yes, we do provide them. And yes, we replace them for you every year and manage the calibration of them for you. Thank you. The next question I have for you is, what if the patient has trouble completing the self-test? Are there any other testing modes besides the automated self-test? Yeah, this is a great question, um, and I love talking about this because um, we just released, uh, well, it was in July of this year, we released a, a new testing mode that since we released it, um, I hear nothing but amazing feedback from my customers that are using it. So uh, basically, the, the automated test in Shoebox is self-presenting, meaning the patient will face the iPad and engage with icons on the screen to present tones to themselves and then enter responses on the iPad screen. In you know the vast majority of cases, that works great, and the employee loves it or the patient loves it. They love the experience. They love not being cooped up in a booth, um, and it's it's a win-win. In you know a very small number of cases, you'll have someone who is not familiar with a touch screen or an iPad. Um, they might have dexterity issues, you know, whatever is is causing the issue, um, but they are not able to complete that test independently. For those instances, we encourage the use of what's called assisted mode. Assisted mode is really a semi-automated test that. Um, it still allows the, the tone itself to be uh, automatically generated and then, you know, having the test follow the modified Houston-Westlake protocol. So all of the, the calculations um, and the, the tone selection is automated. What is not automated is the pace of the tone presentation. So what you would do, instead of having the iPad facing the patient, what you would do is have the patient or the employee facing away from you, still has the, the transducers or headset on, the technician will use the iPad to present the tone to the patient. Patient provides visual cue to recognize that tone. Technician enters their response on the iPad screen and then continues in that matter. So it just gives the, the technician um, or the person overseeing the test more control over the, um, the pace of the test uh, and most importantly, the length of the test. So what we found in some of the studies that we've done is that not only does the assisted mode give the technician the ability to um, you know, assist a patient that maybe is having trouble answering on screen, but also reduce the length of the test. So in, in what we've found in our studies is that it can actually reduce the length of the test by up to 40%. So that's, that's the significant time savings, um, which is why I actually have customers today that, that default to the assisted mode test over the automated test simply to cut down on test time. Thank you, Dean. Um, we're going to do one more question because we're about to hit the hour, and I think this next one will definitely push us over. So um, the question I have for you, is there a limit on a number, on the number of patients you can test or the amount of data you can store within one device? Yeah, that's a simple answer. Uh, the answer is no. So um, the, the size of the application, and I actually, this is a great way to mention that the, the iPad used for shoebox audiometry does not need to be a dedicated device. It can actually be used for, for multiple purposes. I certainly have customers that use the iPad for you know, showing training videos, um, even other test types. So the application itself is, is relatively quite small, and the size of the files for the audiograms are next to nil. So you can test hundreds, thousands of patients. You can choose to keep the data on the iPad or just have it stored on the, the portal. Um, it's really up to you. There is absolutely no limitation to the number of patients you can test with one device or amount of data you can store in the portal. Thank you so much, Alexa. Do, did you want to um, say anything else before, have any closing comments before we wrap it up? 
Um, no, I've, I've really covered everything I wanted to cover today. I do have my contact details up on screen, so if anyone has any follow-up questions um, after the call today, I'm more than happy to field those. My phone number and email address are there, so please feel free to, to reach out, and I'm happy to you know, continue the, the, the conversation um, or provide you know, a more thorough product demonstration uh, if that's of interest. Awesome. Thank you so much, Alexa. Um, I would like to once again thank you for speaking today. It was such a great presentation. There were so many great questions that came in today. And I would also like to especially thank today's webinar sponsor, Shoebox Automentary, for making today's event possible. A few final notes before we wrap it up for the day. You will receive an email from the AHS Daily Advisor within the next 24 hours that contains a link to today's recording. Should you like to view it again or pass it over to a friend? Lastly, at the close of this webcast, you will see an exit survey. To make each webcast valuable to you, we would appreciate your input. EHS Daily Advisor and Shoebox Elementary would like to thank you again for joining us today. This concludes our program. Have a wonderful day.